then secondly, not only must we be willing to hear the message and receive it, but secondly, we must respond in faith. Dr. Clovis Chapel imagines one of the shepherds who had been a youth on the first Christmas night, and now he's become old, all right? And his grandson is now sitting on his knee, and as he recalls, and he's telling them the story, and he says, you know, a long time ago, when I was just a little bit more than a boy, I was out as a shepherd in the field, and these angels appeared in an angelic choir with this great announcement that a Christ child had been born, and that we could find that baby in, 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 in a manger with wrapped in swaddling clothes, and and the story that Dr. Chapel uh, had written said that the old man's lips ceased to move and there's silence. And the little boy, the little grandson on his knee says, well, Grandpa, what happened? You know, what, what, what happened? What, what, what did you do when you hear the good news? What, what, what was, the, was the angel, what he said really true? Was the Christ child ever really bo born? What happened? The old shepherd sadly shakes his white head and answers. He says, well, I never, I never knew. I never went to see. Some say it's all a myth. Others say they found him, the light of God, and the power for light. But for me, I can never be quite sure. I never did go. By the way, that's a fictitious story. That's not really the way it turned out, all right? All of the shepherds went, amen. They all went to find him. But, you know, that's a lot of times what people do in our world today. Am I right? They hear the good news, but they never respond to it. They never act in faith. Hey, listen to what this simple preacher has to say today. If the gospel is true, and I know and believe it is true, come on. Since Jesus came to the earth, since Jesus died on a cross, was buried and raised on the third day. Come on, how many of you know we need to respond in faith? Come on. That's what the shepherds did. When the angels left the shepherds, I suspect they looked at each other with kind of some dazed, you know, expression on their face. They might have said to one another, did you just see what I see, what I just saw? Maybe they discussed it a little bit, but then a decision was made. Let me read it again out of the book of Luke. It says, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And so what we learn from this is that the shepherds acted on what they heard. They went to see the baby that they were told about. They didn't diddle-daddle. They came with haste, and it took a lot of faith to do it. We might think that, oh, that's certainly what we would do. We would respond in faith. But I wonder if that's absolutely true. I think what might happen for some of us is that we might have kind of talked ourselves out of it a little bit. You see, that's what sometimes we do when the Lord speaks to us. Sometimes when we get a direction from the Lord, when we hear the guidance of the Lord, we begin to reason it out. I'm glad that the angels didn't reason it out and say, well, you know, what will happen to the sheep if we're gone? And what if the owner finds out? We could lose our job. And, and you, know, what, you know, maybe we didn't really see what we thought we saw. You know, and yeah, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that talk themselves out of acting in faith. Uh, or maybe we would have just gone in a different direction, you know. The angels were supposed to do what? They were supposed to go look for who? The babe in a manger. They could have went to Bethlehem and just started telling everybody, we saw angels. Aren't we special? They could have done that, right? I'm kind of being facetious a, a little bit. But a lot of times believers, even you and I, we miss the point. The Lord speaks to us, and He does so with the desire to get us moving in a certain direction. And, and so it's up to you and me to actually step out and act in faith. Come on, somebody. And so let me ask you today, what is the direction? What is God saying to you today about the direction of your life in this Christmas season? What often happens to us is that we start thinking about, well, what will others say? What, you know, that may not work. We, we get sidetracked. We begin to think negatively about every situation. We think that this will never happen. And I'll tell you something, you know, sometimes even believers miss the point. Come on, somebody. 
Some, we do sometimes. I mean, how many people are actually celebrating the celebration and forgetting what the celebration is all about? Come on. We're celebrating the celebration, but we forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Come on. And so what's the Lord been telling you today? Maybe he's telling you something like, you know, you need to change some things in your life. Uh, maybe, maybe he's asking you to do something new and it kind of feels a little awkward to you. Or, or maybe it means doing something with, that we, not doing something that we like to do. But when God speaks to us, it's important that we take the appropriate action. How many of you believe that today? Come on. Give me some encouragement today. Give the Lord a hand of praise today. The message of Christmas calls us to action. For some, God calls you to the very most basic and essential action, to give your life to Jesus Christ. How many of you realize He's not looking for your admiration or your approval? He came to earth and He wants your heart and He wants your life. Amen? He went to the cross to set you free from the sin and sorrow of your past. He rose from the dead to show you that He was telling you truth and to give you a glimpse of what lies before you and ahead of you if you will just follow him come on uh, are you one that has responded to the good news of great joy have you accepted the lord jesus christ or is if you kind of just kept faith way out there kind of on the periphery of your life yeah you know you need to be more committed but you're really not come on uh, you kind of the guy that's every, you know, every now and then, you know, hoping, you know, to be in good terms with the Lord. You know, pastors have a little joke between us. We have people we call CE Christians in our churches sometimes. How many know what a CE Christian is? A CE Christian is a Christian that comes to church on Christmas and on Easter. Amen. It's lovely. It's just good to see them. Don't get me wrong. Hey, it's Easter. We'll see you at Christmas, my brother. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to the choir today because we don't got a single one of those CE Christians here today. Come on. Amen. Amen. You say, well, how does a person come to Christ? Starts really by being honest. Being honest about your past. Being honest about your mistakes. Being honest about your life. And... Uh, being honest about the fact that you need God in your life. You can't make it without Him. Your way didn't work out so good. Come, is there anybody that says, that's the story of my life? I tried my way. I tried to do things my way. But guess what? It didn't work out the way. Because you know what? When you try to do things your own way, the enemy's right there. And he'll lead you down. And let me tell you something, just like we studied in our class today in Sunday school, that the devil just wants to kill and steal and to destroy. But let me tell you something. When you give your life to Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you something. When you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, are you hearing me today? The scripture says He will add unto you all of these things that the world's looking for. He'll take care of you. He is your God and He's a good God. Can we give Jesus a big hand today? Come on. You got to be honest. You got to be honest that you need Him. You got to say those words, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. And let me tell you, there's nothing magic about the words. It's all about the sincerity of the heart. And let me, it's, in fact, the words aren't even as important as the sincerity of your heart. And I know many of you have taken that first step, and that's a good thing. And it, but it may be that God's calling you to do something different. I can tell you that it's going to take everything the Lord asks you to do is going to take faith. Come on. Maybe he's calling you to turn away from something that, you know, is causing difficulties in your life. Or maybe, or maybe he's shown you what you should do. Maybe you need to go and, and work on mending a relationship with someone. Or, or maybe he's calling you to help somebody who's in need. In fact, if he's calling you to do that, I bet already right now in your mind, you know exactly who that is. Come on. Or maybe he's calling you to stop living in the past. Stop, stop rehearsing all the hurts and all the, all the pains and, and making excuses for what you do and why you do today. Come on, let me tell you something. Today is the day of salvation. You can make a brand new start today. Hello. Maybe he's urging you to ask for help for somebody else. Amen. I don't know. Or maybe he's asking you to do some type of a really bold action and be bold and do something. 
But here's what I think. I think you may already have a good idea of what he wants you to do because it's likely that the Lord has been whispering you to you by his spirit if you have your ear open. Come on. The scripture talks about those who have ears, let them hear. That's not talking about having these things on the side of your head here. I mean, they're nice, you know. You don't want to look at any of them too close because they're all a little bit weird looking if you look too close. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. If you got spiritual ears, they must be beautiful in the sight of God. Listen, I'm telling you today, God wants to speak to you, reveal His love and His power and His truth in your life just like He did to the shepherds. But you got to stand up and say, I'm going to respond in faith. I'm not going to respond in negativity. I'm not going to respond in unbelief. I'm going to respond that says, God, if you ask me to do this, you're going to empower me to do this. If you say I can do it, I can do it. Let me tell you something. God has a good plan for you. He's got a good future for you. Come on. Amen. I might be careful. I might start preaching this morning. Hello. Amen. I'm just trying to get people to hear the Christmas story, to listen to the message. Because if God did indeed become man to reach out to us, I know He did. He must love us more than we can even begin to comprehend. And if God did all that to reach you and me, let me tell you something. He can be trusted to guide us very faithfully. Do something bold this Christmas. Come on. Follow the example of the shepherds and dare to do what God says. And then number three, not only 